Hello, welcome back to another episode of SCADA 123. Today we're going to be talking about dash core components. Now previously we talked about the dash DAC components that generally are graphics specific for data acquisition systems you'll see over the dash browser. Here the core components is pretty much your standard web basic interface type stuff that's general for anything you'd like to do. Now, to give you a quick startup here on what's actually involved, you'll see a link below this video to get the actual code. But when you want to run this yourself, you'll have to run it, say, if you're a Windows environment, under the command prompt. Now, to begin, you'll basically want to have to go to the directory where it's at, and then you'll run the program. You'll have this program you have the link to. And so if you begin it, and you hit enter, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff coming up there letting you know that the dash is running. And so you're in run mode. Now to get out of this, just hit control C, it'll kill it, and program ends. That's that. Pretty simple and nice. Now this is kind of your basic core components which gives you a nice overview for everything. It's simplified where you have your inputs over here and your outputs over here and there's not a whole lot of code in between. Now doing your dash, which also has dash plotly that does a lot of fancy graphics and stuff, there's a whole lot more you can do to this, but I wanted to give you some of the basics first. Now for here you can see you've got a selection of different core components. Here you'll have you can select whether or not you want to see New York City or not. You have Montreal, San Francisco. These are kind of your core inputs. You'll see the results over here as well. If you click on, say, Montreal, you've got New York and Montreal. You'll see that here. Selected New York City, Montreal. Fairly straightforward. You've also got a range slider here. Now, this is slightly different from your standard slider that you have one value you go back and forth. With this, you can have a lower and an upper scale, so you can basically create bounds, like you'll see here, 5 to 15. You can scroll over here and just simply change that. Now it says 2.5 is your lower bound. Now we've got 17.5 is your upper bound. Nice, straightforward, simple type stuff. Works for all sorts of purposes whenever you're going to need a range. You've also got your inputs here for, say, if you want to do your ranges of whether it's balls. You can see you've got your input there. You can change this as well as these, and you'll see the ranges there. Now, in your text area, contextualized text, you've got multiple lines here. You see the copy right over here. So let's just start typing gobbledygook, and you'll see the same thing over here. Nice little text box where you can enter text. It doesn't have to be a tiny little box. This can basically be a large area with a whole lot of text that you'll see somewhere else. Now you've got your selections over here. You've got a checklist, and you've got radio items here. Now in your checklist, that works as your standard checklist type stuff where you can do multiple selections. Here you can see you've got New York and Montreal. We can deselect New York, and now I've got Montreal. Or you can just click on them all, and they'll all show up. So it's with the checklist functionality, it's multitudes. It's not one only. Now, as far as for your radio items, you've got Montreal selected. If you select New York, you lose Montreal automatically. This is a one-only type thing. So if you decide that you just want them to pick one and only one, go with the radio item type thing. Works beautiful. You can see the output here. Now, you've also got your input, your submit, and say a date picker function here. Now, let's say we want to just type something simple. And let's say submit. Okay, input value was what you just typed. Button was clicked one time. You can also click it again multiple times, and you'll see how many times that was clicked. If you change this to just something else, hit submit. Oh, there you go. Different text. Now you've also got the date picker here. This is a beautiful little web thingy. So we can just click on that, scroll down, and you can see you've got your full calendar menu here. You want you can pick the 20th, August 20th. Change it again. Let's say we want to change the keep going here. And we're going to scroll on up, say February 11th, 2021. Boom. There you go. 
beautiful little core functionality type things that are usable for many different kind of programs and you can use the simple basic stuff here and you can expand it as complex as you want to be. Hope this helps. You can get the link below. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.